Right guys, as much as uh, looking at a, a watch, this is about uh, me doing a bit of a test really for future YouTube videos based on uh, using the wife's camera here for uh, for recording this video and uh, checking autofocus and uh, you know playback sound and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we'll see how it goes basically and uh, quite happy to receive some feedback in the comments below. Um, you know I don't mind what you post down there. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you could what you think could be better. But I just want to try and um, you know keep this as me basically. I'm not trying to be anybody else here. Um, you know, there's 101 people on the uh, on the YouTube here doing great watch review videos, in-depth analysis, uh, really know the history, so on and so forth. So I'll leave that to them, and I'll get on with this in the usual shaky fashion, which normally ends up with us cocking it up somewhere along the lines and getting it all wrong and misleading everybody up the garden path. Now, you know, many of you who watch this will probably already be a follower of my Twitch channel. Again, I'll put a link into that down below. If you're into video games, feel free to join. Free, free, feel free to join the Discord channel and everything. Stay in touch. Um, you know, we'll do the watches, we'll do the gaming, and then there'll probably be some other gadgets coming along for this uh, this channel. But I want to kick this off now. Um, it's something I've intended doing for a while. Um, it's it's something I've been very lazy about getting round to doing. So here we go. We'll jump in and we'll have a look at this watch. And again, let me know what you think in the comments below, guys. Now, what I wanted to do here was uh, start this off, basically, with um, a very, very, very simple but iconic looking watch that's in my collection at the moment. And that is the, uh, the M5610, or the GW M5610 1 ER. Now, what I'll do is I'll put a link in the, in the description below again uh, to Casio's website where you can have a look at this in more detail and uh, explore all the features and have a look at some very nice high resolution screenshots so on and so forth. Now the Mickey Mouse gloves uh, are here because I, again I've took inspiration from some of the other guys on YouTube who do this I'm not a magician or anything. Did you see that? Now then if that if that doesn't if that doesn't warrant a million views, I don't know what does. <laughs> but yeah, ultimately, uh, where were I? I'm off track now. The gloves, the gloves, yeah. So the gloves, um, I got them pure and simply because I didn't want people seeing me with a black thumb where I've hit it with a hammer. Uh, I didn't want to see uh, people seeing the scratches on the back of my hand through fighting with my cat Brody. So I just want to keep it clean. It's about this guy here. It's not about my hands. It's not about my manicured fingernails or... The other watch that I'm wearing at the moment, the Squale 1521, it's not about that. I'll do a video about that in the future, I know that came about. Uh, love that watch guys, I really do. Uh, I sweat quite a bit buying that, but I'm glad I did, because I absolutely love it. Anyway, shooting this in my conservatory at the moment, it's absolutely stifling, it's boiling. Um, so I'll crack on with it, and uh, then we can get this uploaded to YouTube, and you can let me know what you think. Now, like I say, guys, this watch means a little bit of something to me personally because it was uh, it was released back. In, uh, sorry, the original G-Shock was released back in 1983, which was the DW5000. Now there are a couple of variants of that. There was the DW5000 uh, 1A, 1B, and then the 5100C. I think there was. Again, I could do with writing this kind of stuff down. This is basically what looks like the, that original watch. This 5610 looks pretty much identical to it in its style. Uh, just some of the gubbins around the outside of the dial there are slightly different. Um, it's obviously more up to date this. This was kind of a release to kind of, you know, fall in line with the original release. I think it was probably an anniversary or a reissue or something like that that they wanted to do. I don't 100% know, but I know it's here. It's a nice watch. It doesn't break the bank to buy this watch. Uh, many people call this like a, a beta watch, which is kind of a watch you can just wear every day, smash it into the wall, scrape it along your drive, drop it down the toilet, uh, so on and so forth. Um, even though it is a beta watch, I look after it. I wear it, I look after it, I don't want to drop it, I don't want to catch it. I know you can possibly save up and buy another one, but um, my wife got me this for Christmas uh, a couple of years ago, and it's it's in the collection with the other G-Shocks and stuff. Again, if you're interested, guys, let me know. Plenty more videos to come along. They will get better. They will get more refined and stuff like that. 
like I said, this is kind of a test at the moment. And uh, I do waffle. I really do waffle. I know that. And uh, really, it should just be to the point. So, yeah, that's a little bit about the watch. Um, from a function perspective, it's got the multiband 6 uh, radio receiver on it, which means that at like 2 o'clock in the morning at the moment, what it will do is it will actually receive a signal from uh, one of the... Uh, one of the radios, I think the one in the UK is, is, is transmitted from Cumbria so it picks up its signal from the Cumbria area at 2 minutes past 2 in the morning um, it is, it's got it this morning and that means it is, it is second, it is, it is accurate right down to the second basically um, sometimes it'll say like 2, 209, 210 or something like that now I think when daylight savings are off it, it does it an hour earlier you see but when it's not kind of 1 or 2 in the morning, 2 or 2 in the morning, I think um, what happens there is, uh, big bloody dash Yaki is probably laying it when he's asleep, because I wear, I wear my watches in bed. I don't take them off at night and put them on the bedside cabinet. I, uh, I wear them. I'm very much uh, of the era where you'd like to look underneath the covers and a watch, you know, such as the Squale here that's got the... Um, it's got the loom on it kind of thing, you know, you wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning, where are we, what time is it? Oh, I can just see there, it's it's glowing under the covers kind of thing. And then we have a look at the watch as well, you know. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it, it receives its time via multiband 6, uh, and um, let me get this back onto the uh, front screen again, wearing the bloody gloves here. Um, don't get the same feeling basically there through the fingertips, obviously. So, um, it's got the power save functionality on it as well, so if it's not uh, receiving any light uh, du during that, I think it's after 10 o'clock at night, it kind of shuts itself down and goes into sleep mode and then when it detects light it wakes back up again, uh, all, in the, all in the head of, of preserving battery there. And on the subject of battery, it is a solar watch, um, it does charge off sunlight uh, as you can see at the moment it's on high uh, that's because I've been wearing it all this last week and I've been out and about in the sun uh, as many of you know it's absolutely baking out there at the moment it's really nice and uh, yeah I've been wearing it in the sun and ultimately with no moving parts it's just kind of soaked up all that energy and charged up the battery so it's good now, it'll it'll last a, a good while that. And I like solar power guys, I like solar power watches, I like auto, uh, automatic watches and I like kinetic watches as well on the basis of you don't need bugger around with a battery or anything like that. Uh, so yeah, on to world time there, so it's got the world time, you can cycle through all the different countries around the world, uh, you can assign the uh, daylight saving times there as well. I think this does it automatically. This may do it automatically, some of them do. I'm not too sure if this does or not. Some of I'm I'm sure the Gravity Master one that I have, uh, the analog G-Shock, the Gravity Master, that does it automatically. Again, I'll put a link uh, below, so you know you can kind of dig into that a little bit more if needs be, if it's something that's quite important to you. It's got five alarms on this, and it's got a snooze alarm, and it's got an hourly chime alarm. Now, again, you know, going back to when I was a kid, I used to love the digital watches and stuff like that made by Casio. Uh, I never had, I never had a G-Shock when I was a kid. Um, yeah, we used to stand outside the uh, shop in the local town centre, the electronics shop, and they'd have all the the digital watches in the window, the calculator watches and stuff like that, and um, you know, the the little LCD electronic games. Um, I, I've got one actually uh, called Treasure Island, I might make a video on that as well Q&Q, &Q, Treasure Island, Q&Q &Q made it uh, I managed to get it again, I lost my original when I, from when I was a kid but I managed to get one via eBay not that long ago which is probably now two or three years ago when I say not that long ago um, but yeah, it's, um, you know, so it, it, these Casio watches, the Casio calculators uh, the Casio calculator watches Always remind me of being a kid, early 80s, uh, looking in that shop window. And the only chime indicator on this, down at the bottom left hand side, is just a square over the writing, basically. Whereas um, some of the other watches I've got, and certainly um, the calculator watch I had when I was a kid, used to put a little bell, a little bell symbol on the screen for the only chime. And I loved it. I loved the, the little graphic symbols of an LCD watch, and I still do. 
to, the, to this day. Uh, digital watches, I love the display on them. I really, really do. Absolutely brilliant. So again, from a functions perspective, they're moving on shaky waffle. And again, you've got a uh, stopwatch which covers up to 24 hours. Uh, you've got a timer there. Again, I think this is, uh, let's have a look. Let's have a look what that goes to. Again, it's quite weird. <laughs> it's quite bloody weird, this. No, that moves it along, that moves it along. I'll we'll have to get used to these gloves, guys. Let's have a look. Yeah, so it goes up to uh, 24 hours there on the timer. Nothing like a crash course, is they're looking at it as we're, uh, we're kind of going along here. Yeah, I just want to make sure on that. There might be a few edits in this video as I cut little bits of waffling uh, rubbish out and stuff like that. And then that's it, we're back to the main screen you see. So you can see the DST there which is daylight savings. That changes automatically uh, on the front screen there. Um, you know as and when that changes in March and October. Spring forward, fall back. That changes you know, automatically with the multiband 6. Um, so yeah, it's it's got you can have it set to twelve and and twenty four hour. I always have mine set to twenty four hour. Um, it's just something I prefer, and it's auto calendar as well. Electroluminescent backlight, which can be switched switched onto automatic. Obviously, you can't see that here because of the daylight at the moment. So you kind of get that green tinge on this one when you when you give it a, a fire up in the dark sort of thing. So yeah, overall, like I say, um, you know. I use this quite a lot. Um, what I try and do is I, I do like a bit of a watch rotation, where I'll, I'll you know, I'm wearing a, an analog at the moment, and I'll probably wear that for the rest of the week. You know, we'll get some of that vintage leather strap soaking up some of the salt out the skin there with the hot, clammy weather, and it'll just uh, personalise and you know, wearing the the strap even more so. I like that actually as the strap starts to take on a more of a used worn look kind of thing over time because uh, that strap was absolutely immaculate when I first got the watch and it's gone a bit darker now as time's gone on so yeah I use it to, like I say I pop this on um, I've had it on the last week um, I probably might not wear it for another month or so now just depends what mood takes me I try and rotate my watches every Friday so I get use out of out of them um, you know, I've got the I've got various digital uh, G-Shock watches. Again, I'm going to do uh, videos on these going forward, and I've got the um, I put, posted it in Discord a little while ago. We've got the Mission Impossible Casio watch, uh, which is the same one that Tom Cruise wore in the original Mission Impossible film. It's not a G-Shock; it's a standard Casio watch, but with all intents and purposes, it is a G-Shock, uh, just without the G-Shock branding, really. Uh, but yeah, from a comfort perspective as well, it's very, very nice, guys. It is light as a feather. It is. You put this on. It's not the biggest watch in the world, you know, compared to some of the others. But you put it on and you forget that you're wearing it. There's no loose or rubbing or feeling tight. It fits me perfectly. And I forget I'm wearing this because it's so light. It just kind of blends in over time. And again, you know, me being me, it just depends what I'm doing. Um, you know, the other day I was in the garden, so I kind of switched it round to kind of like a, a, a military kind of angle where the face was here to stop me bash it. I know it's a G-Shock, you know, let's kick the L out of it kind of uh, mentality. But at the end of the day, um, I turned it inwards just to protect it. I wear it like that sometimes. Just depends what mood I'm in again. But yeah, very, very comfortable. Uh, very, very supple uh, band there. Uh, resin band just a single notch clasp there some of them have got uh, two holes and two pins and they look very nice as well uh, this is just as it is and it's it's really really nice I think you can change this strap if you really wanted to but I, I tend to leave them with the stock straps uh, I'm not I'm not one for, for changing them out or anything for the NATOs and stuff like that but each to their own, it's all about choice, get it, you know, do what you want with it basically, it's entirely up to yourself. Um, from a value perspective, an enjoyment perspective, um, I think it's probably, this was around about £70 on Amazon at the time when the wife picked it up for me for Christmas. 
Uh, believe it or not, the wife owns one of these as well. She's got one as well because she, she likes this particular watch because it's, it's kind of small. Wears well on her wrist as well. So she got one too. And uh, she wears that quite often as well. She's got, um, she's got one of the Baby G. Um, watches as well. I think it's this, the, the same one that uh, Blake Lively wore in the shallows. It is actually. That's the reason she got it. So she's got one of those as well, and then a couple of other, you know, dressier watches if you if you'll call it that. But anyway, back to this. Yeah, we're about seventy quid. Um, let's let's coin the phrase off the uh, off the live streams on Twitch. There, you seem to get a lot of watch for your money there, in my opinion, with the Solar, the Multiband Six, you know, the ruggedness. Uh, it's a nice looking watch, like I say, um, you, see, you know, it, it, is a, it is a nice price that for this. I have seen it go as high as probably around about £110 when prices are fluctuating and stuff like that. But again, you know, £70 to £100, £100 is probably a bit too much I'd say. But certainly it's £70, it's, it's an, absolute, uh, an absolute bargain in my opinion. From an enjoyment perspective, I love it. I think it's really, really nice. Like I say, I wear it quite a bit on and off, uh, but whenever I do wear it, I thoroughly enjoy it, and uh, it does what it says on the tin. And like I say, it's modelled on the the old '83 model, so really just kind of carrying a little bit of uh, historical significance on my on my wrist when I'm uh, when I'm wearing this. I like it. I like 1983. It means a lot to me. Um, you know, it takes it takes me back to being a kid. There's a lot of nostalgia there, and that's what I kind of like about this watch overall as well. Now, like I say, guys, just to finish up here, um, if you've got any questions about it, or you know, any pointers down in in, in the chat below, the the comments below, let me know what you think. Uh, this is, like I say, it's a one-off. This to begin with, I'm just doing a bit of testing. It's to test the equipment test the camera, uh, test me, so on and so forth. But I don't, uh, by all accounts, I don't do a bad job on Twitch, so what I do on Twitch, I'm carrying across to here, and it's not really done me any harm. So we'll take it from there, guys. So enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very, very much for watching, and um, thanks for any comments that, that come along, guys, and I'll, I'll take them on board and uh, move forward from there. So look after yourselves, uh, if I don't catch you around on YouTube, I'll certainly catch you on the live stream at LeShark75 on Twitch and I'll put the link below. Thanks for watching guys, look after yourselves and take it easy.